Hey guys, Chris here. Today I am in the Sierra Nevada mountains. We got some fresh snow, I believe last night or the night before. Temperature is dropping and we got some amazing fall colors I've been checking out. I am gonna be either car camping tonight or I brought my backpack. We will see what uh, how much light I have. I am running out of light real fast here, but uh, I got a steak and some mountain man stories tonight. That's next. All right, looking for some fall color here. Found a little bit. There was a big flat topped, almost plateau like ridge I was on. Great, great views from up there. But uh, no shelter from any wind. Any wind and I, I would be rocking in my tent all night long, so. But we're getting some, uh, I saw some color down this way. So I'm gonna drive, and uh, yeah, we got snow. Look at that <laughs> snow last night or the night before. Not a lot, but enough to dust it out up here. It's cold. It's uh, got to be near freezing right now. Brought my gloves this time and my hat. I hit a nice big flat rock. It was a little taller than I expected. And uh, it just about put me on a staycation. <laughs> I, was, I checked everything looks okay, so I don't know, but I heard a pretty good pretty good scrape. This uh, Honda CRV's got pretty good clearance, but yeah, you gotta drive, you gotta be really patient when you're on some of these roads get going too fast and you just cannot stop in time to avoid some rocks coming up through the road there so all right I think this is it I found a little side road here it's a pretty sketchy road but it's uh it's getting me off the main road and uh, I think where are you guys? There you are. I think this is gonna have to work. It's a little bumpy here. Look at this, it's more like a trail. <laughs> Oregon Trail here. Oh, we got some rocks too. Look at that, I think we can avoid them this way. Hey, hello. There we go. All right, this is gonna have to do. This will be home for the night. This will be a good place to make base camp. <laughs> good enough. I like coming in when it's sunny. I like sunny. It's a little cloudy and cold right now. It's gonna be a cold night, but I got plenty of plenty of supplies, so. All right, we're catching a little last light here. And uh, like I said, we got a little bit of color right here. So that is good. And I am gonna find a little spot. I mean, I'm essentially camping with the car, but I'm gonna walk the tent off, off in the forest here somewhere. Just find a nice flat spot with no rocks in it. And then we are gonna get some stakes going, so. All right, this looks like a pretty good spot right here. Boy, these aspens smell so good. Well, this is as good a spot as any right here. Some grass and I don't see any rocks. A few pine cones and sticks. Other than that, this is just fine. All right, I got one of my uh, favorite tents. It's a big tent, it's a two person tent, but it's the Arete ASL2 by REI Co-op. And that is five pounds, 10 ounces on that. That's why it makes a good car camping tent or a two person tent or a short overnighter tent. 
which I've done all with, but anyways, it's a great tent. The uh, Kelty Cosmic down here. That's going to keep me nice and warm. It's a 20 degree bag. It is going to be cold tonight though, so I am going to be adding the uh, Teton Sports sleeping bag liner to the inside of it. And that's going to add maybe 10 degrees to help me out stay a little warmer tonight. It's cold right now, but uh, I'm going to be nice and cozy in the tent here. I love this tent. <laughs> it is a nice spacious tent. And uh, just feels really solid in this uh, pretty good breeze going on right now. So I'm glad I'm not up on a, on the high ridge there. It'd probably be a blast. I'm pretty, pretty secure down here. Pretty sheltered. I'm pretty sheltered down here. So that is good. So, all right, time to get the stakes going. Looks like a good spot up ahead. Got a little bit of snow down here. That's what I'm saying. Fall is coming and going fast. So this looks perfect right under this tree here. We got a little bit of a view. Okay, we got the uh, stash here. My jet boil. And that just rotates around like that. That is a nice big burner. I always say that, but it works good. And uh, we have the triple skillet here. But uh, I put, <laughs> there's the skillet, but I put a lot in here. I just kind of like that. Look at that. <laughs> Spatula, salt and pepper, lighter, which I need right now. A little extra. Emergency coffee right there. Taster's choice. This stuff's like a dollar for an eight pack. <laughs> That'll get you through though. That's the emergency coffee. And uh, I haven't got a fillet knife in there. So, but that. Oh, yeah. And then my plate and my bowl. And my mug actually fits in there, the uh, Sea to Summit mug. That's my coffee mug. So, And I don't know if you can see this, but I left this out last winter on a, one of my backpack trips. And somebody came up and gnawed the edge of it right there. <laughs> a ground squirrel or a mouse or somebody. Look at that. Look at the teeth marks. And that still works. stand on here. That keeps things nice and secure. Okay, so we got a couple of a mini sirloin steaks here to throw on. I have a red potato. We're going to be adding that. I'm going to dice that up here in the little dollar store cutting board. My neighbor brought over some fall tomatoes here. I don't know if that's what you call them, but that's what I'm calling it. And I'm going to throw that in. And I like to bring backpacking sometimes. A little bag of baby carrots. I'm going to throw that in there as well, so why not? I've got the heat 
turned way down, so that will get these to cook a little slower while I take this. Cut some these guys up, so. The thing about a potato is, it's so condensed, it's never gonna get smashed up. And you can go through a few days with a potato. You can go a while with a potato. Just keep an eye on it. But unlike like a croissant or something that gets destroyed pretty quickly. Be not careful. All right. And with these carrots, I think I'm just going to put a few in, add some color. Why not? It's a fall color. <clears throat> These little teeny ones. And I think we'll put this on a little bit later. This is the tomato, but why not? And tonight's beer, I have a Sierra Nevada Pale Ale, which is perfect because that's exactly where I am in the Sierra Nevada there. Isn't that sweet? So that is going to be my beer tonight. I think I'll wait right before I have dinner for that. So. All right, that is coming together there. A little more on that side. But. Potatoes are going to take a little more time too, so. All right. Handcrafted beer. I didn't know that. Handcrafted ale. That's cool. Time to drink my beer. All right. Cheers. That is good. As I, as I always say. There's not a beer that I don't always like, so. It's funny, it's really cold, it's cloudy, a little breezy. I'm kind of in this pretty remote forest here, and it's, it's the forest behind me, you can see the pine trees. It's really dark in there. And for whatever reason, I just love it. There's nobody around, I'm like, I'm all by myself. This is a little scary, but it's like, I, I don't know. I just love it. But anyways, anyways, I was thinking about cooking and drinking my beer. That's really good, by the way. <laughs> now I always remember the phrase, uh, uh, I like to cook with wine. Sometimes I even add it to the food. <laughs> well, I like to cook with beer and I just, well, I just drink my beer. So. All right. Look at how juicy that steak is. Wow. <laughs> I know, I'm just kind of throwing it all together. All right, I am ready to eat. That is ready to go, so. Got some clouds, but we do got some stars coming out. It's gonna be a good night for that. guys it is time to head in and uh, get warm <laughs> it's cold <laughs> I do love this little tent all right I got the sleeping bag liner in place I actually took the thermo rest and threw it underneath the climate static V that's gonna give me some extra insulation it is gonna be below freezing tonight so it'll be a cold night All right, 
to make this work, I got the uh, microfiber long underwear here and the uh, darn tough socks. These will give me some little extra insulation. These are really good. They are really darn tough socks. Um, I actually reviewed these about a year ago. So yeah, anything, any kind of advantage you can get, just keep layering and adding until you're just right. It's not worth it to go through a uh, whole night and be cold or miserable. Also, the uh, the beanie is really pretty crucial because your head has to stick out at somewhere so you can breathe. Um, I tend to pull the uh, sleeping bag over my face and just leave just a little window to breathe out of, but the hat makes a big difference. All right, I wanted to get back to you on that sound that I heard. I was in the tent uh, on the last video, 2.20 in the morning, and I heard this, and I, I really am not sure what it is, but I heard this like like a drumming sound, like And it was getting closer to me. And may, I don't know if it was a grouse or something, because I, I know they have kind of a drumming sound like that. And it, it was four or five times, and then it got a little bit closer and a little bit closer, and then at one point, it was like I heard it in one direction, and then behind me, I heard this kind of an exhale, like from a mammal, <laughs> like, ooh, like that. <laughs> and right before I heard that, to my left, I heard a dog, kind of a like a, a sh short yip, yip howl, to my left, and it was like simul, almost like drum drum, wolf or not wolf, but coyote kind of sound, and then a possible bear sound. So I sat up and I pulled out the old hurricane whistle. And this thing is super loud. You can hear it up to a mile away. And I sat up and I, bl I covered my ears. I blasted that thing and it was dead quiet. And whatever was around my tent. <laughs> took off and, uh, and then I heard uh, and I sat up for about 20 minutes just quietly listening for anything and then off way off in the distance I heard way off in the distance so anyways that's what I heard <laughs> Okay, so last time we talked, we talked about mountain men and then the Lewis and Clark expedition, and then we got into Jim Bridger. But the first mountain man was a member of the Lewis and Clark expedition in 1804, 1805, and 1806, the Corps of Discovery that went west to the Pacific Ocean. And his name was John Coulter. And John Coulter was hired as a hunter, and because he had such great mountain skills and, and could help them on this trip he was hired but on the return journey in 1806 they were along the Yellowstone and he requested to stay in the mountains and pursue trapping trapping opportunities in the upper Missouri country and, and Yellowstone River country and they said yeah you did such a great job with us yeah if you want to stay that's fine but we're all heading back to civilization <laughs> so he became the first mountain man and over the course of the next few years, he traveled around the mountains and explored and trapped. And he found an area in the mountains that had geysers, hot springs, bubbling mud pots, a big giant lake. And it turned out that was Yellowstone, Yellowstone country. It was not a national park at that point. Nobody knew about it. And there were stories, he had stories about this area and it became like hearsay and legend because he couldn't prove it other than his, his word, but uh, it turns out it was true. It became Yellowstone National Park years later in 1872, by the way. And then he also found the Grand Tetons and the Wind River Range in Wyoming, places like that. Pretty amazing. So John Coulter's story and his description became known among the other mountain men as Coulter's Hell because it sounded like he was describing hell when he ever told his story of the things that he discovered. And then others found years later uh, what he had been talking about and that it was true. So in the fall of 1808, he was trapping with his partner John Potts in the upper Missouri and it was the uh, Three Forks country, which is the headwaters of the Missouri is the Gallatin and the Jefferson and the Madison rivers. They all form roughly in the same area. 
and they formed the headwaters of the Missouri River. This was really good trapping country for beaver, but it was also Blackfeet country, Blackfeet Indians, and they would be uh, trapping at night and then sleeping and hanging low in the trees during the day, but they got caught by the Indians. The Indians found them and they were in their canoes and John Potts uh, didn't come to shore when the Indians requested that he come to shore and he got shot with an arrow and then he shot back at one of the Indians and then they killed him. They filled him with arrows. Pretty gruesome. <laughs> and then John Coulter gave up and he came to shore and the the chief, chiefs had a council and they decided they were going to bring John Coulter about 300 yards out into the sagebrush and give him a head start and let him run for his life and then the Braves could chase him down and kind of have some sport with the guy but but they also stripped him naked and let him run for his life and they just gave him like I said a few hundred yards head start so he ran for his life as fast as he could run and he had to run bare feet through the sagebrush there's prickly pear cactus there and then the braves were pursuing him and he ran for several miles and then at one point he was running so hard because he was running for his life so he ran until he was so his body was breaking down that his blood vessels in his nose broke open and blood came rushing down his body and just just a big mess and at one point he stops in his tracks and there was one Indian that was really in close pursuit of him and he turned around at the last second and stopped and put his hands up and I believe he yelled at him just like ah, you know, screamed at him. It scared the Indian and he tripped and fell and he, his spear went into the ground and broke in half and John Coulter ran up and grabbed the, the, the sharp part of the spear and killed the, uh, the Indian and then ran to the Madison River and jumped in and swam and hid under it. I believe they said it was some driftwood, but I've heard other stories where it was a beaver dam and he went under the beaver dam and got some branches around him and stayed under there and then the Indians were looking all over for me. They could not find him. So John Coulter stayed under this driftwood pile or beaver dam as long as he could until nightfall and it was freezing cold water and and he drifted out from underneath once nightfall came and swam to the far shore and then continued on eastward 250 miles Fort Lisa along the Bighorn River and he came in and survived this ordeal and it became legend and it was be became known as John Coulter's Run. And to this day, I used to live in Bozeman, which is right in that area. He probably walked right through where Bozeman currently is now. And to this day, they have a run. It's a 7.5 mile uh, run called the John Coulter Run in Three Forks, Montana. And what they do when they start this race, they have a mountain man dressed up as a mountain man. And to start the race, he takes his musket and he shoots it in the air and that begins the race. And it's a seven and a half mile race. And they go over trails and along some dirt roads. And at, and at one point they have to cross, the, there's a, two river crossings that they have to do to complete the journey for this run, seven mile run. So anyway, it's a tradition they do every fall. But uh, yeah, great run. I was out there once and I saw them running and then they would hit the river and kind of trudge across or swim across the river to get to the other shore and keep going. Pretty cool. But anyways, that's the story of John Coulter and John Coulter's run and a great member of the Lewis and Clark expedition. But uh, anyways, I got to get some rest, get some sleep. And tomorrow morning, I am going to be getting some color a few color photographs, but I want to do some, some video for you guys and we're going to make a cool video. So I am going to go to bed and we'll see you in the morning. Beautiful. Hey, check this out, you guys. 
It is currently 18 degrees. For today, I got to get my coffee at the local mini mart down at the bottom of the mountain here. I got to get rolling here, but uh, good, good short overnighter, and we will see you on the next one. And as always, keep hiking. Coffee, so I am good to go. Yes, all right, keep hiking.